Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. I'm going to forego announcements for today just to keep the momentum of the prophecies that are being made and the prophecies that God has given in recent times going. If you want to know anything about the Master's Voice Prophecy blog, you can always skip a few videos back and look under the video and you'll see where the platforms for the Master's Voice blog are located. There are audio platforms, there's video platforms. On some of the alternate channels, alternate video channels is where you can find videos that can no longer be hosted here on YouTube. And so uh, without further ado, I'm going to handle hopefully one or two prophecies today relating to Barack Obama. They will be very short videos, God willing, because these were things that were happening in 20 in 2019. So the prophecy for today is called the times to come America. And this prophecy was made December the 2nd, 2019. And the reason this prophecy was made on December the tw December the 2nd, 2019 is because God literally asked me, why are you not saying the things that I have given you? So this prophecy is about Barack Obama and I had been seeing things. Uh, God has been talking to me about Obama since I would say 2014. 2014 or 2015. So at, the, at that time, the Lord was not speaking anything in depth. He would just say things like, Obama is a murderer. Or he would say things like, Obama is very dangerous. And then I would, I would hear these things. And at that time, um, the same-sex marriage law had not even been passed or anything like that. So that was one of the first things that I saw. And even at that time, the understanding that any person would have is simply that this person is again against what God stands for, that this person is so brazen that this person would codify into law what many previous administrations may have been giving concessions here and there to, but none of them were so brazen as to come and change the bedrock of family, faith, and community in the United States by granting the rights of marriage to those who so flagrantly come against what God says is his order for men and women in procreation and family and community. And so uh, it, would, it would be times passing. It would be times passing that God brought further understanding to this man. And I began to see open eye visions and I began to have rather terrifying dreams um, concerning this man. And I would just keep these things in advisement. I did not have the blog back in 2014 and 2015. And so this banner scripture here for December 2nd, 2019 is this. The prophecy is called the times to come, America. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Some translations say, and half a time. And this is Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25. The second banner scripture is this. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their fullness, a king shall arise, having fierce features, who understands sinister schemes. His power shall be mighty but not by his own power. He shall destroy fearfully and shall prosper and thrive. He shall destroy the mighty and also the holy people. Through his cunning, he shall cause deceit to prosper under his rule and he shall exalt himself in his heart. He shall destroy many in their prosperity. He shall even rise against the prince of princes but he shall be broken without human means. And this is Daniel chapter 8, verses 23 to 25. Just a moment, please. And so the heart of this prophecy is deep, and yet at the same time, the heart of this prophecy is very simple. And the simplicity of it is that former President Barack Obama is going to come back to power in the United States. To old members of the Master's Voice Prophecy blog, even if you've only seen a few videos, you surely have come across this theme 
that this man who is apparently has passed into the sunset of American presidents is determined that the sun will not set on his reign. And God has revealed here on this channel and through his prophetic work that is called the Master's Voice Prophecy Blog, that Barack Obama is going to be seen once more in U.S. politics. He's not going to be seen as any type of peripheral player. He's not going to be playing a side road role or an assistant role. Barack Obama is going to come front and center and be like a king, like a regent, like a ruler ruling in the United States. And as you're hearing this, um, you understand already that to hear it proclaimed to a developed nation that has absolutely no history of a monarchy, a nation that fought tooth, nail, and gun to get rid of the monarchy that was controlling this nation in its infancy, and establish itself as a free nation to hear that the monarchy America never had is how America is going to end. In one of the prophecies that I covered in 2021, I mentioned it in yesterday's prophecy. It is called the stock and the store. Part of the words of that prophecy read, America is going to end her days like a child, just as she was a ward of Great Britain. A ward means something like an orphan, someone who doesn't have parents to look after them. And so they put you in the care of an orphanage or they put you with sometimes a wealthy old widow who agrees to raise you as her own son or her own daughter. The words of the prophecy states, America is going to end her days as a child. She will lose the rights to govern herself. And like the ward that she was at the beginning of her life, where she was in the control of Great Britain, she will end her days in the care of basically the beast system. That is God's punishment. That because this nation was given power and influence and greatly helped by God to go through her own independence struggle, and she was successful, she threw off foreign rule and established herself as a ruler herself, but those who don't know how to handle rulership power eventually always lose it. And the Lord has been saying that he has spoken to greater empires than this one. So America is only great in the mind of Americans, to be quite honest. Many people outside this country do not share any of the cool aid views that are so strongly clung to here. And it is the cool aid views that will lead many people into perishing in the last days. Because once those views begin to crumble, and once God says, whatever it is that you think you are, I no longer support that. And he steps back. I, what country can survive without God? What person can survive without God? When God gives up on you and hands you over, even if all people group together as Israel did in the book of Deuteronomy, when God told them, since you don't want to go into the promised land and I'm leaving you, this was in the book of Numbers actually, he said, I'm leaving you and I'm no longer going to cross you over. You're all under a curse. I'm wroth with you. I'm angry and therefore all your carcasses will fall in the wilderness and not a single one of you are going to cross over. Then what happened? They rallied together and they began to repent and their repentance was totally ignored and rejected. They went to try and cross over. They were soundly beaten. Quite a few of them died. And then when they were done doing all of that, God spoke to Moses and said, take your leave and turn this way, which is away from crossing into the victory. And then begin your circular trip of the mountain for the next 40 years until the prophecy was fulfilled. All of them died in the wilderness in the 40 years. Their carcasses fell as they were told because their judgment was set. And so America is going to lose her right to govern herself. And she's going to be governed by a regent, a king, and that person is Barack Obama. And Barack Obama is, believe it or not, whether you want to accept it or not, these banner scriptures that I've read in your hearing describe the man who is coming to be America's controller. She's going to be a ward in the hands of this man that the Bible says he gets his power not by human means. This is Revelation 13 right in front of us where it tells us that the beast receives his power from a dragon. So these scriptures that God is giving are not just fly-by-night scriptures. They actually mean something and that's why I always read and explain the banner scripture. A person who will come speaking great words against the Most High. Daniel said long ago, this, this phrase, great words, it means pomposity. 
So we have not heard the full of the things that he will say. But I've covered some of the things that he will say. For instance, in the prophecy that is called the new man, which is the coming of the transhumanist system, the coming of a world in which human beings will be strongly wooed and courted and told that this body is frail. Obama is going to spearhead an era where humanity will be told, well, look at how you get sick. And look at how you age and look at how you lose your youthful vitality and your face begins to fall and have lines. And why would you want to go through that when you can look 16 years old forever and a false type of continuity, a false youth renewal program is going to swing off, not only here in America, but across the world because the B system is a system predicated on lies. It is a system at its core. If you have not studied Revelation 13, and even though you're looking at those words, there is another world beneath those sentences. Another world that God has helpfully brought out here time and time again. That world in Revelation 13 is a world where Satan simply says, I can do better. Sit back and watch me work. I can do better. I can do youth better. I can do health better. I can do governance better. I can make life more zappy and zingy. I can make the animals talk and I can bring the fallen angels down and you can see angels, real live angels. You can interact with real live aliens. Satan is going to create a funhouse madness world and it is right there in Revelation 13. In every sentence, if Revelation 13 tells you that a beast is arising from the sea and gets his power from the dragon, who on earth thinks that the dragon is China and not Satan? If you're thinking at the spiritual level, if you are not caught up in the letters and you are looking at what the spirit is telling you, Revelation 13 is brazenly telling you what will come. That a world is coming in which Satan will stand up. And since Satan is not ready to bring his scaly dragon-like self out, he's going to have a form that is acceptable to men. And that form is a beast that rises out of the sea. The sea being the mass of peoples. One who looks like us. One who looks like man is going to arise out of our midst But just as Jesus was the visibility of God, the father among us, Satan is going to have the visibility of himself, the dragon among us. And as Christ has all the power of the Godhead bodily dwelling within man, within that flesh, so too will this man. God is speaking greatly spiritual mysteries here. And it is imperative that we don't miss it simply because we open Revelation 13 and we look at it and we say, I don't see what she says. It's right there. The Bible even tells us what the world will be like at that time. It says that when this visible satanic driven person rises up, all the world will wonder after him. To wonder after something means that it's coming in a marvelous fashion. And yet, no matter how many times we teach this, no matter how many times this is spoken on this channel by the spirit of the Lord, people will still say, I don't think it's Obama because he's not very charming and we can all see through him and nobody likes him. And yet I have spoken years past of the power of spiritual seduction. Spiritual, spiritual seduction is like a mist. In the Bible, it didn't rain in the old days. The Bible says that in in the early times, in Genesis, in, in the earth, a mist is how the ground was watered. A mist would rise up and that's what, that's how crops would get watered. That's how gardens would get watered. That's how people did agriculture. They counted on the mist, a kind of night dew that would rise up from the ground and bring water. This is why Noah was mocked when Noah said that water would come from the sky. He was mocked because people thought, who ever heard of rain, Noah? Spiritual seduction shall arise in the end times like a mist. And the thing you claim you hate now 
If your heart is not guarded by Christ, if you don't have the helmet of salvation on your head, if you are not protected, you will love that thing. You will be at the front of the Barack Obama conga line and you will not remember a thing that you said now in 2023 about how woke you are and how aware that he's the beast and you had a dream and you had three visions and you're already ready. If you are not spiritually locked and loaded, shielded and protected by the spirit of God, when these spirits of seduction begin to transfix the entire world, you will be found in the Obama conga line marveling and following after the beast exactly as it is written in Revelation chapter 13. The entire sordid, terrifying story of the new world order can be seen very clearly in Revelation 13. For instance, when you hear the phrase that says, all the world marveled after the beast, it is not saying that every single soul will marvel up after him. It means the preponderance, the greater mass will be snared in this spiritual seduction, this net, this trap, this enchantment of the mind that is going to come. Now I ask you, you that lived through 2020, a different enchantment took holds of minds of people all over the world and they were forcing their children to take something. And they were threatening their family members and saying, you're endangering us. And if you won't take it, you're going to have to leave. Can you now understand the arising of a very tiny persecuted minority? If everyone's mind is following one belief system and marveling after the beast, what happens to the people who are preserved by God? referred to by Daniel as the holy people that this beast will destroy. What do you think happens to these holy people when they become a minority? If you were the minority that didn't want to take the harm in the arm, what happened to your rights? What happened to your voice, your ability to speak, your ability to express yourself, to hold a dissenting opinion? What happened in 2020? When the minority said no, what happened to rights and freedom of movement and being attacked and losing your job and still being unemployed to this day, some people? The story is right there, but are you looking at the truth of God's word with the blinders off or are you literally filling in the application card to be one of the foolish versions? Because that's how they've cleaned up the Bible in the last days. They're now called the wise and the unwise versions. It says the wise and foolish versions. Because it's a foolish virgin that will see information in the scripture and then say, but it's, it's not for today. Because we, we have an expect, expected date. And, and besides, Revelation 13 is wrath. Revelation 13 is prophecy that is coming to all living 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 is very clear about what it says in 4. That there can be no falling away in this church. No great separation of the church into the deceived and the undeceived until the man of sin is revealed. So until he stands up, all those with an expected date are missing the very powerful revelations that are contained in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. You just read that thing from verse 1 to verse 12 and it's very hard to stay captivated to the sleepy time stories that are carrying the foolish versions into a storyline that will cause them to hit the wall in the last days. This is coming directly from four points that I was given. And the four points to include in this video for the prophecy are number 44 will return. That's the first one. Number 44 will return. The second part of this prophecy is going to be Christians in the White House. Christians in the White House. The third part is the wise and the foolish virgins. The fourth part is Christians in hiding. A time of hidden faith. So this is some of the information that was lost from yesterday's prophecy. This is the some of the information that um, could no longer be heard. And so we hear of a time, we hear of the coming of one person who is going to receive a kingdom 
This person is going to receive a kingdom, for he is called a king. The king of fierce features that arises. A man who has understanding of dark and sinister schemes. So this is a master plotter. You're reading the scripture, you're looking at every single word. Every word of this book is life-giving. And no word is misplaced. No word is failing in its function if you allow it to function. Sinister schemes means evil and diabolical plots afoot. And yet the Bible says that this man is no fool. It says that he has understanding of sinister schemes. Sinister schemes go both ways. It means that this man is able to come up with, plan, and plot sinister schemes. It also means that this is a man who has understanding of other people's sinister schemes and is able, by whatever means, probably satanic power, to sniff out schemes against himself and put them out like evil people put out the candle in movies. When someone understands something, that means they know how it works this way, and they know how it works that way, and that is a very difficult opponent to beat. And this is Prophet Daniel giving helpful clues into the character of the one person that all the world should be watching for. It says he will have mighty power, but not by his own power. So this is a system of devolution of power. The Roman centurion who came seeking Jesus to heal his servant. When Jesus looked at the man, the man said, Lord, there is no need for one like you to come to my house. Merely give the word and I know that my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority. I say to this one, go, and he goes. And I say to the other, come, and he comes. And Jesus was struck by the man's faith. Jesus understood that this man was saying, I understand the devolution of power. I am a centurion. That is a very high rank, he was telling Jesus. And he was saying that I belong to a government system. And the reason I have servants under me is because I too am a servant and I obey those above me. So I understand how power works, Jesus. And I am now telling you, even though your people are subjugated to my people at this time, I am telling you that I am your servant, Jesus. Me and my entire government, including Caesar, bow to you. For we are men that must call our servants. We must say Procusius, and then Procusius will come. And we must say Gaius, go. And then Gaius will go and do a task. But I see in you a higher power. Your body can stand right here, my King Jesus. And you will send your word. And your word will travel to my servants and perform the thing for which you send it. That man was telling Jesus in front of all who had ears to understand, I worship you as God, for no man can send words and heal one who is dying. And Jesus was struck to his heart to see a foreigner to whom he had not yet preached his gospel, moved to worship him in public. And that's why he honored the faith by, by saying, in the whole of Israel, with all the time I have spent with these people who are my brethren, they have never honored me with understanding the way you, a foreigner, have done. And when the man went home and inquired at what time his servant was healed, he was told the exact hour that he had used his Roman mouth to worship a Hebrew God. This man that is coming understands the devolution of power and he's not getting his power from the republicans and he's not getting his power from the democrats democrats he is getting his power from the same place that the roman centurion understood jesus's power came from the spirit realm where there are no caps on power he's not going to be working with ballots and elections and this is America's great mistake because she does not understand sinister schemes and she does not know either the mind of the Christ that she usually disobeys and she cannot understand the workings of the evil one that is coming with deceivableness and lying wonders. 
She's caught in the middle. No spiritual understanding of the Lord and completely blind to the sinister schemes of Satan. And yet Daniel, far back, opened the book for us and told us a mighty power is coming that is not of this man's own power. The devolution of power, drawing down power from a source beyond most people's brains. So whenever they hear these prophecies, they respond in carnality, flesh, but we don't like him, but he can't come back because the constitution says two terms. Imagine, that's the level. You're talking about the constitution and Daniel is telling you, hello, beast dragon power incoming. Beast dragon power incoming. He will destroy fearfully. Fearfully is an old world word. Ancient times word. People hardly ever use the word in modern times anymore. It, it doesn't mean to, to be filled with fear. It actually just means to a shockingly great level. And yet God will give me prophecies now open for a modern audience so that they don't have to go and Google and find out when the word fearfully is used and what age it was used in. God will give modern prophecies for a modern audience and then they will say, but um, we, we, I don't see it. Mass death. How many times have I prophesied it? A great hunting program here in the United States and also around the world for the beast system will sit on all the continents of the world. A massive hunting program. And who shall be hunted? Let us go back in the scripture. His power shall be mighty, not by his own power. And then he will destroy the mighty and also the holy people. Who are the mighty? Who are the mighty? These are the soldiers. These are the governments. These are the pilots. These are the special ops guys. The mighty always speaks to those who have might, power. But then there's a comma, and then it doesn't leave out a second group of people that are called the holy people. So the holy people are the people who don't want to hear what is coming for the holy people. Because the holy people are stuck on two or three scriptures and one very strange saying that says that Jesus won't beat up his bride. And then the rest are, we are not appointed to wrath. And then Isaiah also then will say, but go into your rooms, my people, hide yourselves. From what? Until the indignation, which is a typology of wrath in the scripture. The indignation be overpassed. You have the entire chapter Isaiah 13 that is talking about things that America will see mostly because I've brought Isaiah 13 here many times. America will see most of Isaiah 13. That is a direct letter from the father to this nation. But then it also contains other things like talking about the destruction of the whole earth and how also the entire earth will sit in darkness, terrifying the peoples. And then people will say that days of darkness in which there will be no sun giving light, no moon giving light, and the stars of heaven falling, which is these denizens, these rejected sons of God coming down. The stars shaken like figs in a high wind. Then they will say there is no darkness. The verses are right there, but the holy people say not so. So to the other group of holy people who already know the truth, Daniel has said that the coming of this one that has been named by God as Barack Obama is that he will have a fearful power to destroy, a very wide application to cause death to many. And it says also that he will prosper and thrive. To prosper means to be successful at something. To thrive means to greatly increase. So you start off doing something, but no matter how you work on it, it just seems to grow and grow and grow and mushroom like a very successful field of corn. So when we apply the verse, these words, prosper and thrive, it comes right underneath the fact that it says he will have mighty power that isn't even his power, which has already been explained. And then he will destroy fearfully. So what is the sentence saying? The sentence is actually saying he's going to be really successful and hugely thriving as his mighty power that is spiritual 
destroys almost everything in sight. This is the destroying power of the beast. And people don't want to sit still and let the Holy Spirit break open these nuggets that the soul may be fed. Because there's feeding for the soul. It doesn't matter how scared the soul is. And it doesn't matter the denial of the soul. At some point, the Christian soul must be brought under control. That is the role of spiritual discipline. At some point, the soul must be grabbed and stopped. Like David said in Psalm 41, Why are you so troubled, my soul? Hope in God. At some point, that little thing running around in there like a squirrel or a chipmunk, it must be rebuked. It must be brought to order. So that we are not like people who box the air and are ineffective in our prayer and our warfare. We can't just say, I'm so afraid. I'm so afraid. At some point, there must come a time where we acknowledge that the things are fearful. But now discipline must be brought in. These are some of the messages that were lost yesterday when I was preaching in the unction of the Holy Spirit. That God was saying it is necessary for the church to develop resilience. Resilience is the ability to bear up under things that are heavy and difficult. No one ever said, I won a million dollars and I had to be resilient. Resilience is not required for good things. Resilience is required for things that are difficult, things that test the soul, test the mind, test the body. They test the constitution. In the old days, in the ancient writing, this whole body, your ability to bear bad weather, your ability to bear bad crops, your ability to have a hurricane come and destroy your farm, blow your house away, kill all your milking cows, and you lose all the money you were hoping to do in that agricultural world of long ago. Resilience is the ability to bear losses and difficulties and to take hits and to still be found standing. We cannot be a church that has run all the way to the end of, end of Revelation 22. Everyone is a master in the last sentence. Even so, Lord Jesus, come. Everyone has a master's, a PhD, doctrine, doctorate in, in that part. Even so, Lord, Lord Jesus, come. Do you know why? Do you know why that sentence is the last sentence in the book? Do you know what even so means? Even so means we have heard all the other parts and it gives no joy for it is a hard saying and who can bear it but even besides all that we say Jesus come. That's what it means. Revelation is the story of the things that men must know and understand must come. And the reason that a very bright and strong John, who represents a bright and a strong holy people that have resilience and fortitude and endurance, and discipline and have learned to grapple and fight their fear and pin it the reason that they have the right to say even so is because they are declaring back to their captain aye aye we have heard and we will wait for you there are only two types of people in the end times and as you listen to this message, your soul is already letting you know which type you are. I, I don't even have to typify those two. Just know there's only two and you can only decide to be one of the two. You can't wish away prophecy. These are some of the things that were lost in yesterday's messages. You can't wish away prophecy. You can't complain it away. You can't say things like, how often, how, how are you going to keep saying the same messages? Who can speak to God in this manner? The old prophets, they prophesied for 30 years, 25 years, the same message. Ariah, Jeremiah, arise and go to the potter's house. And then the same thing that he said in chapter 2 comes. Isaiah, go and say this. Speak to the king of this and say to them in Jerusalem. And the people hated them in those days as well and got sick of them just the same. 
Because the same kind of lacking of spiritual understanding in these days were there in those days as well. The same type of people we have now, rebellious and hard-hearted and proud, are the same type that they had then, which is why the punishment from then is the same punishment we have now. If people are complaining and saying, we've heard it, we've already heard it, then they're basically saying, God, you need to tone it down and you need to pipe down. We heard you the first 12 times and there's really no need to keep sending this person. And yet you don't understand that the entire point of the prophecy will be to drill into every soul like a nail that cannot be escaped until that soul transforms into the person who has the right to speak the final sentence of Revelation 22 which is, even so, Lord Jesus, come. As long as you are not a true soldier who is waiting and able to utter those words, whether you go by the blade that this man is bringing or whether you are preserved until you are part of we who are alive and remain, whichever contingent you end up in, if you don't actually mean it, then you will just fall away like chaff as soon as the cutting blade hits the earth. If nobody has ever opened these scriptures for you before, whether they had a fancy ministry that had a logo and everything else, these are the realities. A mighty power that is mightier than the power of flesh. This man will have flesh, and yet it says the power that he will wield, the words that will come out of his mouth, the way nothing is going to stop him from prospering and thriving as he's destroying fearfully the mighty and the holy people. The reason all that's going to happen is because there is another power giving him power and God is not going to stop that power because the Bible says in Revelation 12 that the devil is working with fury and haste because he knows that he has a short time left. So even God is not going to oppose the rising of this time. Imagine that the one God that you insist is never going to let this happen is going to stand back and pull back his restrainer like he already told you in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. He's just going to pull that restrainer back and one who restrains is going to restrain no longer and the church is misinterpreting the Bible and saying they are the restrainer. Imagine that, that God is going to use a bunch of defiled, pedophile, child-abusing, Tithe stealing, scripture twisting, hair gel wearing, skinny jeans corrupter, rapture teaching, defiling all the nations around the world and robbing them of the preparation that they need to endure the end times. A lying church, Laodicea, part two, with disco lights. Imagine that group of people thinking that they are God's great restrainer in the earth and not the Holy Spirit. America, woe to you. You are that people from Jeremiah where it says, where Jeremiah felt pity and he said, these people have inherited lies. Imagine that. A fable, a lie. Imagine your faith rooted not in truth, but a lie. And then you think that having outbursts will change the reality of that. The restrainer is not of man's power. The restrainer is of the one who himself restrains. The very presence of God is like a girdle around the earth. It is like a belt. He told me to prophesy and say everything that I know. And so you will just find all these various conversations that the Lord has with me peppered throughout the videos. You can watch, not watch. It is completely up to you. His very presence is like a belt, a girdle that keeps earth from growing obese in wickedness. Because God already knows what an obese earth can look like. She did it in Noah's day, and the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be again. And here we are. Earth has fought very hard, and her wicked sons with her, and now she's breaking that girdle. Not the false and deceived church at the Kumbaya rapture services, but the wickedness that goes on in America's dungeons the children of this nation, their first sexual experience is usually with their father or a male family member or someone into whose cares they are placed for a few hours every day. 
I hardly think that that nation can give rise to anything restraining because the nation doesn't know how to respell. She doesn't know how to spell restraint. She spells restraint license, lasciviousness, and porn. Such a nation is incapable of restraining anything spiritually because she cannot restrain herself. And the church in America is no restrainer because if she were, America would be a land of restraint, but it is not. It is a nation fallen to loves and lusts. And you must be told this for God's judgment is just. And before it comes, the charges and the indictments, something that people are very familiar with, must be made. The times to come, America, you have heard the word of the Lord that through cunning, the evil one coming will prosper in deceit during his time of rule. And he will exalt himself in his heart. Very proud. And it says he will destroy many in their prosperity. What does this mean? Well, this is certainly a nation of wealth. This is certainly a nation of property owners. Lush farms. Lots of cows. Tractors. Agricultural means. A lot of intellectual property. Money. The home of money. The coming one will destroy many in their prosperity. This is simply the scripture that I'm reading. You can see it here in blueprints. There's nothing extra. It is just me reading and opening, opening the Bible by the Spirit of God. I'm just reading the scripture and saying what it actually says. To destroy many in their prosperity means that a sudden rod will be laid on the wealth of the nation unexpectedly. And you've heard this rod, but it's coming from the mouth of Klaus Schwab and Bill Gates and associates. The rod says that in a few years time, a great utopian plan to give you universal basic income and free housing in exchange for taking away your rights to be the determinant of how much money you can make, how much wealth you can pursue, how much property you can own will be taken away and you will have nothing and be happy. That's what it means to destroy many in their prosperity. So then you go back to the dream in which I spoke about the nascent rise of coin where I said that I saw suddenly, very early, I was living in the suburbs, made that dream come to pass. And my neighbor, a much older lady in her 60s, she ran over and she said, oh, you dear sweet child, it's happening just like you said. My husband and I are leaving. And she ran to the camper and she got into their SUV that was attached to a trailer and they zoomed off very early in the morning. And I began to hear a loudspeaker system across America. And the first name it started was with that lady. It started with that lady's name and it was saying, fleeing in a gray SUV, carrying in the camper. And it began to list gold bars and gold coins and all kinds of wealth that that woman and her husband had in the trailer that left me stunned as I heard the voice speaking the wealth of that this woman and her husband were attempting to flee by road because whatever happened in America that day it was a sudden law that made it illegal to own property illegal to have gold illegal to have silver illegal to have all the things that Bloomberg is telling you you have to have to be a discerning American citizen it was all illegal and they were trying to flee via land you could not leave america by by plane at that time so they were trying to people were jumping into their cars the roads were gridlocked god put me in the air and i was looking at the country and pe seeing people try to flee and the most successful people were these guys who live alone or guys who were brought up by their father grandfather great grandfather that told them chuck ben anything goes wrong you jump into your old car and you hit this back road and whatever, and it'll get you to Mexico by sunrise. Those men just threw what they had into the car, their dog and a few other things, and they were gone. They knew the back roads. They knew where to sleep. They knew how to hide their cars with camo and trees and all that. But the majority of people were caught in a sudden morass that made it illegal for American citizens to own anything and i said that i saw the government swoop in like a crab and take it all down to bespoke golf clubs and custom-made cufflinks 
They came into the homes and seized all the property. Everything that a human being could not take, it was called forfeit. I will leave that prophecy below. Through cunning, deceit will prosper under this particular time. And the ruler will be exalted in his heart. He will successfully destroy people in their prosperity. And hear this. It says he will even rise against the prince of princes. So this is a voice that's going to come after religion. And in the prophecy concerning this man, Barack Obama, the prophecy is called the man of sin. God says that Barack Obama will speak unbelievable things against God. And I spoke of those things in the prophecy that I mentioned earlier, the new man, where I heard his voice saying, why are some people short? Why isn't everyone tall? Why do some of us get sick? We all have a right to health and long life. And he was speaking and saying that the body that God has made, given us is full of flaws and that we should get a better body. And that is Satan speaking through the mouth of one who will exalt himself in his heart. It says that he will rise against the prince of princes. And to rise against the prince of princes, nobody can enter into heaven and rise against Jesus. So all this means is the visibility of God in the earth. Who is that? It's us, the Christians. We are the visible face of the Father. We are the church. We are the building made without hands, living bricks, each one known to him and tattooed upon his palm. Many of those tattoos are going to be erased in the earth before the Lord returns. He will rise against the visibility and all that is called God. This very thing that I'm saying, rise against the prince of princes is Daniel chapter 8. You can find the same thing mirrored in Revelation 13. That he declared war against God and those in heaven. And he didn't restrain his tongue. He will say things about God that will have people clutching their pearls and passing out like it's a hot July day. And he will say it. Televised. He will mock the Bible. In the prophecy, the new man, God gave one sentence that this man will, will speak. And I heard his voice laughing and saying, <laughs> how can a snake talk? And the Lord said, there is the serpent talking right there. He will mock the creation story. And all who hate God and hate restraint and hate to hear that things like lying and stealing and fornication and homosexuality are bad, they will laugh along with him because they will be so relieved to have a leader and a king who finally gets rid of this pesky Christianity. And imagine the church that is going to be participating in this getaway actually thinks that they will be gone somewhere else. And that this will be happening to this weird contingent called the left behind. Here is the relief of the Lord. The final sentence in all this. He shall be broken without human means. So after all this is allowed to happen, we finally hear the Lord bringing back how it ends. The same way this man will rule and prosper and craft will prosper. And he will rule by a power not of men, a power not his own. He will also be broken by a power not of men, broken without human means. And that is the word of the Lord. And so the man that is known as Barack Hussein Obama is a very controversial, controversial figure in American contemporary life. He has been loved and revered as an icon to many a representation of all that's possible to achieve in the nation of America, that you can work hard and you can utilize your talents and gifts to rise to be president if you have a dream and believe in yourself. That is what some think. He is viewed as a hero and a favorite son of America. But Obama is also hated by many as a charlatan, a wise pretender, a thief who fooled the nation into voting for him twice based on multi-layered promises that he had no intention or ability to keep. He has been called many names, good and bad, undoubtedly a gifted speaker and an expert at keeping his finger on the pulse of popular opinion. He is a guru at winning the crowd. And even when he has left office, he continues to woo the public successfully. 
Dream 1, October 8, 2019. I was praying. I was awake, seeking God in prayer in November 28, 2019. Praying about personal things when I began to be troubled by a vision that began to grow and grow and grow in front of me until I was confronted by it and I had to stop praying. I saw myself or I was looking into a room. I call it a richly appointed room, meaning that it's the kind of room of a man who's lacking nothing financially. Dark wood, expensive pieces of furniture, nicely done, the rug, everything is, is just speaking money. And what I saw is along one wall, I saw the American flag was directly in front, behind Barack Obama. And I saw Barack Obama in front of the flag and he was basically as you can see me now it was a portrait view of him perhaps almost to the waist and as I was looking at him the perspective drew in close towards his face and I saw that this man's canines so these are the two sharp teeth that we have at the sides of our mouths that look exactly like a dog or wolf but ours are very small and God has not made them pronounced because it looks uncomfortable that way that is the way vampires teeth look those two in his mouth began to grow down until they were becoming fangs and it was impossible for him to close his mouth anymore and his mouth began to pull back over those two large teeth growing out until he looked how dogs look when they're about to start growling he was wearing a black suit and he was in visible rage. And as I watched, those teeth lengthened and a curious ring of fire, this is a ring of white fire, began to form in both of his eyes instead of, instead of just the pupil. And as I watched this transformation happening, I was so confronted that I couldn't even pray anymore. And I, I stopped and I said, God, what did I just see? And for perhaps, as I, I said, for perhaps the 50th time this year alone, this is in 2019, when I began to be troubled by seeing many images of this man, the Lord repeated to me and said, that is the beast of John's revelation. That is the beast of Revelation 13. And so the second encounter was the night that this was published, basically, when the Lord said to me, why have you not shared what I've given you? How many times will you hear me and not speak? He, Barack Obama, is coming back to power. He is the king of fierce countenance. He is the beast of the revelation. He is the one who will think to change times and laws. And all the nations will languish. This means to lose vitality, to lose strength, to just become very weak, like a balloon that has been pierced with a small hole and now it's dribbling the nations will languish under his oppressive rule he will rule with an iron fist and he will collaborate with the iron kingdom to bring a reign of terror over the nations please understand that the iron kingdom is the coming of the fallen ones with all their technology and toys number 44 is about to take his place let the nations hear and beware number 44 will be again he will usurp power and rule from a very high place and you've already heard many times here in america that i said that this man is going to bring about a bloodless coup that he has already orchestrated and has his little pawns in place the pawns that each political party loves imagine one hand controlling all your favorites and you in the front of the chessboard thinking that it's not a rigged game he will usurp power and rule from a very high place. He will be an absolute monarch. In a time of few kings, he will be king. In a nation of public rule, he will be a dictator. That is what I said in the beginning, that America, you are democratic, a republic. The public plays a strong role in electoral policy so you think, but God says, in a nation that thinks itself a nation of public rule, a dictator is coming. He will rule over the peoples with an iron fist, and his influence will flow out of America into surrounding territories and into nations far and wide. He will operate in absolute power and grind the nations under his feet. The people will cry out with their oppression, but he will not hear. This is the beast 
and his time is now. This is the word of the Lord. And so, if I can give you any advice, it would be to read your Bible. It is a dangerous thing to read a powerful and living book like the Bible and to be deceived because you have simply decided that you will parrot corrupted modern teaching. Imagine the teaching is corrupted, but you're so centered in it. And the reason that many people, no matter what is said on this channel, no matter what is said anywhere, no matter who else compounds and confirms these truths, many people will not be rescued from this. And the reason they cannot be rescued from this is because they are vested in the knowledge of themselves rather than the knowledge of the truth. Many people, in order to let go of deception, you will go naked for a period of time. And God is not against that. If God could make Jeremiah, if God could make Isaiah naked, then who can't be naked? He was a prophet and he went naked for three years, naked and barefoot in front of all his people. This is his aunts, his uncles, the president, all the senators of the day, all the religious leaders of the day, none of them could deny that he was a prophet and yet he was the prophet with no clothes. But this generation cannot be stripped of confusion and folly because how dare God remove their false teaching and replace it with the truth. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And now we go down to verses 10 and 11. That says, because they would not stop loving the lie. They would perish by that lie and God would send them a strong delusion because they had no love for the truth that would have saved them. Many people love the emperor's new clothes, pomp and ceremony, complete misunderstanding of the word of God and insistence that the other person is wrong. Imagine you're not arg arguing with a neighbor over whether whose Amazon package is it. You're arguing and playing a game with your eternal soul, insisting that you are right about certain things only for the era of your wrongness to come. And at the time that you need to be clothed with mercy and grace, you are naked. You will be naked in front of who you don't want to be naked in front of. This is celestial and this is the master's voice. The prophecy is simply called the times to come. America, a prophecy of the return of number 44 president, past president, ex-president, and soon to come regent and king, Barack Obama, December the 2nd, 2019. God bless you. And until I see you again, goodbye.